Assalamu alaikum. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we start our first lecture. Uh, first of all, introducing the book from the covering. As you see on the screen, this is the book that we are going to use all through the semester. It's called Steps to Academic Reading Across the Board by Jean Zukoski Faust. Okay. <clears throat> Today we start with uh, Unit 1, the first reading passage, which is called Angels for One Another. So Angels for One Another is the first story uh, in this book, which is yani, simply about an Indian family traveling from India, from Delhi in particular, to uh, the United States, and they made a stop in Frankfurt, and they met by a lady an American lady at the airport in Frankfurt and there is sort of a story between the family and this you know American lady uh, at the airport of Frankfurt okay on we go and we start here with the story and please you have to pay attention to the narrator of the story the narrator of the passage of the reading passage yani who uh, tells the story, okay? Which, what what we call the narrator, who rawil qissa, okay? The narrator here in most of the, uh, let's say not most, uh, some of the stories are told by the first narrator, which is called I, which is the I point of view, okay? I was, I went, I had, I, uh, uh, okay? I went, you know, uh, I took, okay? This is what is called the first person narrator okay using the eye point of view some stories are uh, some stories use the third person narrator which means the narrator uses he she it he went he he took he had he was they were uh, he had okay uh, and so on so uh, our first story angels for one another angels for one another okay is told by the first person narrator which is I I was that means the narrator of the story is part of the story he is telling a story that he experienced himself or he is I mean he or she the narrator is part of the story is a participant okay we start I was angels for one another. I was on my way home to Arizona from Turkey. I had a four hour layover in Frankfurt. But waiting was no problem. I had books to read and letters to write. First I checked with the airline for the place and time to, of departure. And I went to the lounge of the departure area. The airport was crowded that day but I saw one row of five connected seats. That row looked empty at first, but then I realized it wasn't. A long red duffel bag lay across three of the seats. I took the seat at the other end. About 15 minutes later, I saw a beautiful young Indian woman coming toward me. She had a baby in her arm in her arms and two young girls at her side. The oldest of the three children, a girl of about seven, was looking straight at me and she had daggers in her eyes. She started at me with anger until she sat down on the floor next to me. She opened a small bag and took out a beautiful white lace heart. It had been crocheted by hand. She took a pair of scissors out of the knapsack and she was just about to drive the scissors into the heart. I spoke up. That's the way to ruin that lovely heart. She turned and looked at me. Someone who loves you must have made it for you, I said. My grandmother made it, she said. She put down the scissors. The baby, okay, the baby was coughing, 
here line 26 the baby was coughing and crying and he was obviously sick and the mother was busy talk taking care of him she glanced at her daughters and at me she looked her and unhappy then seven years old reached into the knapsack next page she pulled out line 30 she pulled out a lovely piece of handmade lace it was a long strip perhaps four meters in length it was sewn to a long piece of cloth perhaps it had been cut from the bottom of a dress she reached for the scissors again I spoke again what pretty lace I said you could make something out of it the little girl and her th three year old sister looked at me to them it was nothing I showed them how by working together we could separate the lace from the cloth for more than an hour we worked stitch by stitch we freed the lace and we talked they were going to Cincinnati they means the, the family the Indian family uh, the Indian family and uh, the narrator like I was they lived in Indiana their father worked there they had been in India for their uncle's wedding I turned to their mother she and the baby were both asleep we finished with the lace and then Sarah okay, or Sarah took a book out of the bag her little sister climbed onto my lap and together we read the book Emma fell asleep in my arms but Sarah talked on the baby okay here that is line 46 the baby awoke and the mother did too she watched her daughters and me for a while then she introduced herself to Chand as Chandra I told her that my name was Jane and she thanked me for letting her have a few moments of rest then she asked if she could leave her daughters with me for a few minutes she needed to change the baby's diaper it was no problem for me the girls seemed comfortable and I was enjoying their company the baby fell back asleep after they returned then the girls and I went to wash our, our hands and comb our hair and then we were all back together in the waiting room now line 57 suddenly last paragraph on page 4 suddenly Sarah looked up at me and said they tried to kill grandma I was obviously shocked by her words I glanced at her mother the mother said next page okay. uh, line 60 the mother said that's right and then the three of them told me their story they had gone to India for the wedding of the girl's uncle it was a very big celebration for a very important family 300 guests were coming the house was painted inside and out the family treasures were taken out of the bank vault for the occasion new servants were hired too one of the new workers was a new cook the day after the wedding the groom and bride left on a trip Chandra and her children went with the grandfather in the car to Delhi to catch the plane it would take a full day to get there from the airport from the airport in Delhi they called to say goodbye and heard this story the cook line 73 the cook had put some poison 
a sleeping medicine in the food. Everyone who ate the food fell into a deep sleep. Chandra's mother, sister, brother-in-law, the night guards, and all the other servants had fallen asleep. In the morning, the day guard came to the house. No one was there to open the gate. No one answered when he called. He went to the police. They found that all the wedding gifts were gone. All the family treasures were missing, and everyone in the house was sound asleep, drugged. By noon, everyone had awakened except Grandma. They took her to the hospital and tried to wake her up, but she was still asleep. Nothing, it seemed, would wake her up. Line 85 Line 85. Okay, Chandra asked if I would stay with the girls while she tried to telephone again. This time she came back happy. Her mother was awake. She was still very sick, but she would be all right. I asked, Has she been in good health? Chandra replied, Yes, she is still a young woman. Next page. Okay, page six, page six. At the moment, okay, means now, at the moment, the announcement came over the public address system. They would be boarding our flight in 15 minutes. I asked which seats they had. Chandra said, can you believe it? I'm traveling halfway around the world with three children and I don't even have an aisle seat. We're in the middle three seats of row 23. My seat was next to theirs on the end of the row. What a coincidence. Last paragraph. Line 98. Then we return to our conversation. Chandra mentioned that her mother's birthday had just passed on April 3. So had mine. In a few sentences we realized that her mother and I were born on exactly the same day. Chandra said, I needed an angel and you were sent to take my mother's place. Amma sat on my lap and slept all the way across the Atlantic and Sarah talked to me non-stop. Okay, this is the reading passage and you need please when you read a, a, a reading passage like this or a story while reading you underline the difficult words or the new words uh, that you find difficult so you can uh, look them up in the dictionary or you check them in the uh, w uh, list of words, our words and idioms list uh, uh, right after the reading passage. Uh, what else you need to do while reading the story, you, read, you need also to underline the important you know, events, let's say like for example underlining the names of people involved in the story and then names of places, sometimes dates also, just in case if you need to refer to, to these uh, details when it comes to the content questions. I just come back to the story again, angels for one another, and just uh, help in some in, in explaining some parts or some you know uh, parts that might be difficult or that might need to be explained. Okay. Here, for example, here we talked about, you know, I. I is the narrator, okay, which is uh, Jean, the person who is telling the story, okay. She is from Arizona, and she is coming from Turkey through Frankfurt, flying to Cincinnati, to the United States, okay. So she had sort of a problem once she was at the airport to find a place to uh, sit, and then she looked at... Uh, 
at uh, connected seats and they were not empty. She thought first they were empty, but they were not empty. There was a duffel bag, okay, duffel bag. And duffel bag means what? It's a kind of a longish bag and round, sort of a round and longish bag. No, it's not just that normal type of bag. As you see in the picture, sort of this is the sort of a uh, duffel bag. Okay, and this uh, word or this uh, idiom or uh, uh, item is explained in the words list. So uh, the narrator, Loa Jean, the American lady, يعني, by helping the family, the Indian family, uh, she is in a way to Chandra, the mother, uh, was sent as an angel to help her, to replace her mother. Okay, considering as 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 an angel, because she I mean Chandra, uh, Chandra was very much uh, in need for a help from someone else because of the three kids that our three children that she had with her. Okay, the two the the children were what, what? the she had two uh, girls and one baby uh, boy. Okay. Uh, let's go to the words and idioms list, page 6. Okay, as I said before, we have here about 1 to 28 uh, items. Uh, you have a, a line on the left of each word, and as I said before in the introductory course, uh, that these lines is just to see if you are familiar or not familiar or if you know or you don't know uh, these words. So just for you to check your uh, knowledge about, you know, or your previous knowledge about these words. So if you know these, if you know any item of, of these from 1 to 28, you just put a tick, okay? Just a tick on, next to each one. Let's say we start with number one. Okay, uh, number one, lower an aisle seat, which is what? A place to sit next to the walkway. Usually, you know, when you are on a plane, you ask, you know, for either uh, an aisle seat or a window seat. Okay, or a middle seat. So either on an aisle seat or a window seat or a middle seat. So aisle seat. Okay, aisle seat. Okay, aisle. Okay, S is silent here. An angel, which is the title or part of the title of the story of our reading passage, which is what? A heavenly creature sent from God to help. Angel. A bank vault is called what? Is the safe. And sort of a box. Okay, a kind of uh, safe box that is used in the banks to keep, you know, uh, expensive, valuable, precious things. Okay, a locked up place in a bank. Okay, a safe. It's also called also. It's also called a safe. To be shocked, to be surprised, and unhappy. Shocked. Be surprised and unhappy. Board a flight means to go onto the plane. Okay, to be called by the airline employee to get onto an airplane, our airplane before it leaves for its destination. To board a plane. Okay, just to move and go get onto a plane or an airplane. Board a flight. A bride. Huh? A bride, which is what? A woman on her wedding day. A bride. That's opposite to what? Number 15. A groom. A bride and a groom. Okay? A bride, a woman on her wedding day. Okay? La Rus. 7. To a change, sorry, to change a diaper. Okay? That is something. Uh, to, you know, mothers do or sisters or whoever uh, do this for babies okay, to put a clean, dry covering on a baby diaper, okay to change a diaper, that's sort of an idiom huh? 
idiom. Idiom means what? Idiom. Idiom, you know, sort of what we call in Arabic. Yeah, not just a word, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, an idiom. Yeah, in Arabic, mustalah. Because this is to change a diaper. Okay, to change a diaper. So, this is an idiom, which means to put to clean, dry covering on a baby. Okay, تغير للطفل الفوطة تبعه. A coincidence, a coincidence, happening of two things at the same time, an unusual event. Okay, a coincidence, هي مصادفة. The happening of two things at the same time, or which is what unusual event, something happens that is not expected, or two things when happening together unexpectedly. To crochet. What use a special hook to use a special hook tool to make thread or string into a pretty net like pattern? I think also this is يعني, something that uh, a lot of ladies do when they work on what they call in English canvas and even in Arabic they call it canvas or canava. Okay, shogar al canava, crochet to use a special tool. Okay. Usually it's a bit hooked at the tip, at the top, okay? Hooked and then uh, with uh, to make, you know, thread or string into a pretty net like pattern. Okay? Shugal ala al kanaba. Departure, just to leave. The action of leaving from a place. The action of leaving. Departure. To leave. To go out. To drive something, this is another idiom. Idiom. Okay? To drive something into something else. Here it means to force one thing into another. Okay? To force one thing into another. Drive something into something else. To push, uh, you know, uh, and by force, one thing into another. Drugged has an adjective here. Drugged. When someone who is drugged, okay, someone who is under what influence of chemical substances, because we call مخدر العرب. Under someone who is under the influence of uh, chemical substances. We are in number twelve. Number twelve. Drugged. Number 12, okay, drug. Okay, drug, as I've just said, someone who is under, you know, the influence of drugs or chemical substances from drug. 13, a duffel bag, okay, a duffel bag as a noun. This is a kind of bag, okay, it's usually soft, long, and round bag for carrying uh, clothing on a trip. Okay, duffel bag, duffel bag. As you see from the meaning in English, okay, نوع من الحقائب تكون مصنوعة من ال الجلد طرية وتكون مدورة مطاولة بالطول مش زي نوع الأنواع العادية المربع. Okay, it's a special kind of uh, bag. It's called duffel bag, and you have a picture of the duffel bag on the first page of the reading. Fourteen, to glance, to glance. To look at, to look at someone. But what? To look at quickly and then turn away. Okay, just to have a look at someone or at something and then turn away. A groom is, as I've just said, opposite to number six, a bride. A bride, a lower woman, on her, on her wedding day. A groom is the man, a man on his wedding day. Laris, a groom. To have daggers in one's eyes, idiom, okay, مصطلح هذا, okay, you use, you, you, you have to, يعني, uh, try to take an advantage of, you know, the, this list and the other list and remember uh, as many as you can of these idioms and use them, okay, use them, have daggers in one's eyes, okay, means what? If you say someone has daggers in his eyes. 
That means to look at someone in great anger. To look at someone in great anger. Okay? زي ما نحكي بالعربي يعني ينظر لشخص والشرر يتطاير من عيونه. Okay? أو يعني في في عيونه شر ينظر لشخص وفي عيونه شر. مش بس النظر للشخص لا نظر وفي نوع تعبير عن الشر والغضب. Have daggers in one's eyes to look at someone in great anger. Seventeen lace, non count noun as a non count noun because can okay it's not يعني you can't use you can't say laces okay as a non count noun okay يعني you can't use in plural form. That's that's what non count means. Non count is a noun that doesn't have a plural form. Okay. Lace, we can't say laces in this case here. Laces, an uncount noun, like you know, milk. You can't say milks because it's an uncount noun. Water is an uncount noun. Air is an uncount noun. Okay, uh, meat, sugar, salt, non-count nouns. Lace is an uncount noun. Okay, and it like crochet, like if now if it is count noun, that means we can make plural, like book books, count noun. Door doors count now. Okay, lace is what net like crochet trimming. Okay, lace. زي شريط مزركش أو يستعمل للزركش. Net like crochet trimming. Eighteen. Eighteen. A layover. Okay, a layover. What is a layover as a noun? A period of time between two. Airplane flights, a layover, one hour layover, two hours layover, three hours layover. Okay. Okay, one hour layover, two hour layover, three hour layover, and here the lady here, Jean, had what? Four hour layover. Layover is what? Is the time period of time between two flights or two airplane flights. If you are at the airport waiting for a flight, okay, and you know this is what is. And if, you, if there is, uh, if you are coming from somewhere and you are at the airport, you arrived at the airport, and then you are waiting for another flight to take you somewhere else. The time between the two flights is called a layover, okay, a layover. لو إيش الوقت اللي تنتظره بين رحلتين. تصل إلى المطار مثلا من رحلة معينة وفي انتظار زي ترانزيت انتظار رحلة ثانية فهذا الوقت اللي بتنتظره بين الرحلتين بين رحلة وصولك ورحلة ثانية بتكمل فيها إلى مكان ثاني شو نسميها؟ لي أوفر لي أوفر A period of time between two airplane flights A lounge That's very common name A sitting room A sitting room Lounge Medicine is also a, a common word that is used a lot chemical substances to help a sick person get better medicine medicine of course not this word only uh, many other words on this list or any other list you know in english may have other meanings here we give we are giving the meaning of the words according to the context they uh, come in or they are used in the reading medicine as a chemical substance here, medicine. Then 21, okay, 21, non stop, non stop, as an adverb, as an adverb, okay, uh, without interruption, without interruption, yani, some, that, some, something that goes on without stopping, no interruption. بدون تقاع بدون انقطاع just one go okay without interruption as non-stop here for example if you talk about flights when you talk about a non-stop flight that means it starts from one destination and goes on until the what the end of the uh, trip it doesn't stop at all it's a non-stop flight it makes no stop of any kind it goes from one destination to the other without a stop, without stopping. 
because sometimes if you talk about a direct flight a direct flight you may have a stop let's say if you are flying from Dammam to Jeddah uh, they may tell you that it's a direct flight but still you have to stop in Riyadh for half an hour for one hour then you continue to Jeddah this is a direct flight but there is a stop but if it is a non-stop flight that means it goes from Dammam to Jeddah right away without any stop a poison a chemical substance that can hurt people poison chemical substance that hurt people who is sum sum 23 a public address system a public address system loudspeaker system or loudspeaker system to give information that is something very common you hear when you are uh, at an airport you always hear what you know calls from the through the loudspeakers telling you about the time of uh, departure time of you know landing or coming you know flights and then calling people you know to uh, check uh, to check in their luggage or to there are you know uh, a lot of you know calls you know that you hear through the speak the loudspeakers uh, while you are at the airport or also in other places but usually this is very much common at uh, the airports the public address system okay اللي هو ايش اللي هو النظام public address system okay اللي هو النظام النداء العام في المطارات أو في المحلات العام أينما كان. Okay. To ruin, to ruin, ruin to spoil, to destroy, to break, ruin, to spoil, to break, to destroy, to damage. Also, ruin has other meanings, but here we talk about uh, the meaning that we have in this reading passage. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. A servant, now, a worker in one's home, a paid helper, servant, someone who helps you at home or anywhere, and you give him money in return. Worker in one's home, servant. Strip, lua, a long and narrow piece. Strip a long and narrow piece. There was a this thing you, you call this, for example, the the on my shirt. If you look at, uh, at my shirt, these are strips, okay? Strips, long and narrow pieces or lines, strips. Treasure number 27, 27 treasures. Treasures. It comes in plural form. Okay? To mean what? To mean valuable things. Okay? To mean valuable things. Yani things that you have. Whatever you have uh, as valuable, you know, uh, materials called what? Treasures. Okay? اللي هو ايش الاشياء الثمينة اللي يمتلكها الشخص من مجوهرات، فلوس، أي شيء ثمين. مع يعني together ها اللي هم بيعملوا ثروة الإنسان أو ثروة شخص شو نسميهم treasures okay treasures valuable things last number twenty eight a waiting room which is clear a place with chairs where people can wait for appointments okay this is the words and idioms list that you need to concentrate on and you need to know uh, and memorize of course uh, the meaning of each item you need to know the meaning of these words okay but of course just to know يعني, the simple part of the definition of each word let's say for example number one uh, aisle seat 
a place to sit, uh, this, this one, you need an angel, heavenly creature, this is enough. Uh, a bank vault, a safe, that's enough. Okay? You don't, some, in many cases here, our uh, definitions, you don't need to memorize or know the whole definition that is given. Sometimes one or So please you uh, keep this in mind that the words and idioms list you need to remember the meanings of these words and when you uh, try to remember or memorize the meanings go to the yani, uh, simple or direct meaning as the exa examples I gave like I've just said you know, a bank vault you say a safe that is enough you don't say to, to, you don't need to say a looked up place in a bank as if يعني, is enough to give the meaning uh, okay then before we end up this lecture uh, I'd like just to draw your attention to next exercise the exercise right after the uh, words and idioms list there is always what we, they call here understanding sequence the understanding sequence exercise okay, is a simple exercise but it is very helpful to yani, for you to uh, test your understanding to the reading passage okay? Be because it goes into details uh, in, the, in the, the sequence of these uh, details according to time what happens first, what happens next second, third, fourth, etc. So, uh, such an exercise you have to do at home uh, on your own and number one is given for you. See for example, number C should be number one in the sequence of actions. Sequence means what? Sequence. To put in sequence and to put in the order, in, in time order to understand sequence of action يعني, to understand the order of actions okay, in, in, in terms of time what happens first second third, fourth, fifth then, next after that, finally this is what is called sequence of action okay? For the words here from, sorry, the items here or the sentences or the events from A to L Okay? They are scrambled. They are not in the right sequence order. Okay? They are not in the right uh, sequence. Okay? So, you need to uh, reorganize according to the sequence of time. One, I'll do just two or three examples with you and then you please do the rest at home. Okay? One is C, as you see. You're talking about the narrator. I arrived in Frankfurt. What could be number two? Uh, what could be number two? Number two is what? Number two, for example, number D. It's on, okay? D. D. Okay? I arrived in Frankfurt. I found out the departure area. Because this is the thing, first thing that she did. She found a departure area. Then we put D, we put number two okay what could be number three what what did she do then and then uh, she arrived in Frankfurt I arrived in Frankfurt one I found out the departure here then what happened huh she saw I saw a woman and three children which is number A and that is what we write number three okay so then what else we look for number four in the sequence of action, sequence of events. And then we have C1, D2, A3. What could be as four? What could be as four? Lua? What happened after three? After I saw a, uh, after I saw a woman and three children coming toward the seats. Huh? What could be number four? H is possible here. I found a place to sit next to four empty seats with a red duffel bag on their 
sorry, on three of them. Okay, so H I think is number four. If I'm mistaken for any reason, please you let me know. But I hope I'm right here in this sequence. Okay, so H is number four. Then we go to number five. What could be five? What could be as five? And this will be the last for you here. Five. Then what happened after four? I found a place to the next. Sorry, uh, to sit next to the four. Uh, what is it? Sorry. I found a place to sit ne to sit next to four empty seats with a red duffel bag on f uh, three of them. Then what happened? What is five? Five could be F. F is the best. A little girl sat on the floor near me and opened a bag. Even F could be five. Okay, that is number five. Then you do please do the rest yourselves at home. And I hope you can do it correctly. If you have problems or questions, you may ask. But this is not a difficult uh, exercise because all what it needs is what all what it needs is just to go back to the reading passage and you know find out the details uh, in their sequence uh, in their time sequence in their time order okay uh, for next time and next class, you please prepare the, uh, the next exercises. Lower exercise number nine, answering questions about the story. You please read the, but before you do the exercises, this one or the, the one before, you please make sure that you read the story. You have to read the story more than once. You read it two, three times, as many times as you think, yani, uh, or you feel that you understand okay read it two or three times okay once you think you understand all of the details then you move to the exercises read it as much يعني, as many times as possible uh, then you move to the exercises the understanding sequence because without understanding and يعني, uh, reading carefully the reading passage, you will not be able to understand or know the answers to the questions of the exercises. Okay, so let's say for example, for next time you do this exercise uh, at home, the, the exercise I'm going to assign for you, not on level, answering questions about the story. Okay, give the answers uh, in a notebook and you keep until the end of the semester. Okay. And make sure you compare what you have and what you answer to what I'm going to give you out, what I'm going to discuss with you in the uh, next class when we start uh, answering these questions and dealing with these exercises. So there are here eight questions. You please answer these questions. These are very important. These questions are very important because they, يعني, in a way, uh, reflect the, your understanding to the information or to the details of the story. They are called, you know, as you know, they are called comprehension questions. That means they test your comprehension, your understanding to the reading passage. They are important and they'll be important for the exams or for the final exam. Okay. Uh, then we come to the next exercise and please when you uh, answer the questions here you are answering questions about the story you try to give a complete sentence for each answer okay and give meaningful complete sentences don't just give one word uh, answer okay try to get to be as complete as possible uh, of course you don't need to write the questions just write the answers to each question then we go to uh, drawing conclusions from the story uh, some of these uh, exercises we'll do others we just leave for I mean I leave for you to do at home like for, for example this one 
uh, you need to uh, which of these to decide which of these statements are true and which are false so next to each item on the left on the line here okay next to the okay here we have uh, true false statements decide whether these 10 statements are true or false according to the uh, your understanding uh, to the text or to the reading passage and please here make sure that you don't write TF please this is wrong don't write T F no please I want you to write full complete word true okay here as you see here true false don't write TF this is wrong you have to practice writing the full word okay a uh, complete word for uh, true and false okay I hope that is clear so as you see in the example in the example they say true not T so you write true T-R-U-E false F-A-L-S-E right the word the whole word uh, let's say here for example uh, number one is, uh, is true the new cook was the person who stole the wedding gifts true number two Chandra ate some of the food with poison in it did Chandra eat the food with poison in it I think this is false okay because they were not they did not attend the uh, the party okay they did not attend the party and so that's why they were not poisoned okay so you uh, continue the rest of the exercise with true false so you write sorry you write false okay write false full word next exercise again also you do at home another part of the homework that you need to do okay which is very simple again concentrates on the vocabulary uh, part you have uh, finding the meaning in context yani to know the meaning or to uh, look up the meaning of the words or of the uh, idioms of phrases in the context context means what in yani sentence context in a sentence in a text in a sentence or a text So, because words which when they are out of context, they are not very much meaningful. Yani, because a word can mean anything if it is not in context. It's more meaningful for any word, okay, when it is used in a context. So, don't tell me why. Yani, if you ask someone or if you are asked, you know, about you know what's the meaning of let's say, uh, okay, let's say what's the meaning of uh, look. I'll get, I'll put. These are yes, simple words, but they don't have one meaning. Okay? If you check, you know, the meaning of the word put, I'll look, I'll get, you may find about, you know, 20 meanings for each of them, or maybe more. You check your dictionaries and, you know, see how many meanings you get for the word look, or the word, you know, uh, uh, let's say uh, look or take or get or uh, okay then here so that's what is meant by in context so meanings of words when you look up a meaning of a word you have to look it up in a context when a word is put in a context that makes it very easy to uh, no, I'll guess the, uh, the meaning of the, the word. Here, for example, number one is given for you. Okay, which meaning is closest 
to the underlined word or words. Circle. You have to what? To follow the direction. Say circle, not underline, not to X, not to put an X or not to, uh, you know, put a tick. Circle. Circle means, as you see in the example. Okay? Circle. Circle is one number. Well, there is a place to walk between the eyes. There is a place to walk between the, uh, the stacks of things to buy in a store. So what is a place to walk in a store, in a supermarket, in a, a movie theater? Okay, what is it? An aisle. It's another mean of a place to walk. An aisle. And then give the meanings of the other words in number two, three, four, five, six. Number two is safe. Things in a, say for example, the word safe. Safe has a lot of meanings. Doesn't have only one meaning. But here we want the meaning of the word safe in context. Yani, in this sentence, in this situation. Things in a safe. So what does safe mean here? A, B, C, D. You, next time please, come with your, or at least you please check your uh, answers to this and do it on your own until we meet next time. And another thing also you need to do, Lua, on number 11, page number 11, sorry, on page 11, Okay, that is what is called the matching new words and meanings. To match. To match means what? To match. Okay? To connect. To put together. Okay? To match. Okay? As you know, there is a famous word that is used also to, يعني, what's the, they call matchmaking. Okay? Matchmaking. Someone who is called matchmaker, a woman or a man, can be a matchmaker. Someone who, you know, uh, match people, يعني, who just, you know, arrange a lady or a, or, or a man who uh, arranges marriages. Okay? For here we talk about matching uh, words. We have two columns, two lists of words, one column, and one list is numbered, one, two, three, two, nine, two, ten, and then the other column is uh, put in uh, numbered in letters, okay? Oh, it is lettered A, B, C, J. Now, you please, when you match, don't please match using lines like what you have here in the uh, example in the exercise. No, you please uh, go to, let's say, waiting room. What does waiting room mean? Huh? Yeah. Yani, which word of the Opposite line or opposite column, huh? Which line, which word matches with waiting room? Is it A, B, C? Here you have the example H. La waiting room means H. You please put H next to lounge. Okay? Don't use. Don't do this, please. And it's a bit not a clear and untidy way to do things, in my opinion. So, what I want you to do, please, you just write the letter, okay? Write the letter next to each word that matches, you know, with the numbered words. Eh? Uh, waiting room, H. Then, a duffel bag. What does duffel bag mean from A, B, C, D? Okay? If you check, there is a word that is in number F. Duffel bag is what? Knapsack. Knapsack means the same thing. And then we said duffel bag, we put F here. Duffel bag, F means knapsack. Then you continue with the rest of the exercise. Okay? You do the rest of the exercise in the same way. Okay, uh, that's all for today. And next time, and next lecture, we continue with the rest of the exercises. And then uh, we discuss the answers of the first uh, assignment or of the first homework. And I show you yani, samples of uh, typical answers to the questions.
and hopefully we by the next class or by the second class we finish unit one so thank you so much I hope you enjoyed the lecture and understand what have been said and what have been any uh, lecture for you today so in case of comments or any suggestions please let me know I hope I'm clear in my voice and in my yani uh, discussion okay I hope I yani made myself clear for all of you thank you very much and have a nice time thank you